This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Mm. It's great to see those of you who are here today. I've already had a wonderful Mother's Day. And I wish uh, all of you a happy Mother's Day. And I don't think there are any other announcements. Well, the, the church, the Universal Christ group will meet this Thursday. And if you want that, um, that link, let us know. And Brent is going to be starting some groups and that will be in, um, in newsletters and uh, online through Facebook. So let us uh, take a deep breath ourselves and join in the call to worship from our various homes we gather our hearts and minds in the presence of God through whom every family in heaven and on earth receives its name we pray that the peace of Christ might dwell in our family relationships we pray that the peace of God might permeate the life of the entire human family. May the love of Christ fill our hearts, our lives, and our world. Amen. Amen. Reading is from the Psalter, Psalm 61. And I don't know, were you going to show it, Brent, or not? Doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll share it. And um, Brent and I will read it responsibly. So the Psalms, before I start, just a reminder that the Psalms are uh, full of prayers, thanksgivings, uh, laments, supplications, confessions, all the feelings and prayers of God's people. So hear this prayer. Hear my prayer, O God. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me abide in your tent forever. Find refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows, you have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king, may his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God, appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So I will always sing praises to your name as I pay my vows day after day. Amen. And the New Testament reading is from Luke, um, the 11th chapter. And this is a section where Jesus uh, was praying, as he so often did, with withdraw and pray. And his disciples uh, ask, ask him to teach, to teach him, to teach us how to do that. So here are these words. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When ye pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. 
So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, I love to hike. And um, I learned over my years of hiking that it's good to take certain things with you. So, what do you take? when you hike. I always take my water bottle. I've learned that the hard way. And if I'm going on a long hike, I'll take a camelback. I take a hat. This is my hiking hat. To protect me from the sun and sunscreen. I take good walking shoes, snacks, some granola or an apple, some nuts, and uh, I take a knapsack or a backpack if it's a long hike, put my snacks in. And I also take a bandana, a kerchief, which is great for, you know, wiping sweat, blowing my nose. Um, and we've learned that they're good for other things too. Well, we're going on a long hike these days. As many have said, it's a marathon, not a sprint, this um, COVID. You know, we've barely been in this social or physical distancing, sheltering at home two months. And from the beginning, we were told that this pandemic will continue to be a um, an enemy to be a threat until we get a vaccine or a, um, yeah, until we get some kind of protection through the medical researchers and team. So, and that looks to be minimum 12 to 18 months. So we're probably in this for another year, maybe not to the same extent that we've been, but we're still, uh, threatened. We're still in a, a, dip, a difficult and different situation. So we probably have a year or so to go. What will get us through? Well, we've been told that masks are important. This is my Iron Man, Spider-Man mask. I picked this one out because my son loves Spider-Man. So we have masks, hand washing, hand sanitizer, and minimizing exposure, this social or physical distancing, this sheltering at home. People have learned to sew masks. This mask was made by uh, some women in Chestertown where I work. They donated them to Aaron Point. Maybe you've learned to make masks. And of course, we can make a mask with a scarf and those hair twisties. This bandana serves as a mask. We've been tutored on TV and YouTube how to wash hands thoroughly with warm water, singing happy birthday once or twice, getting the fingernails. Our leaders have made decisions to limit our exposure. Uh, our mayors and governors and presidents and world leaders. 
And we are learning more and more how to be connected and to be see one another even through this physical and social distancing through zoom through facetime going up and knocking on windows i do that at heron point but i want to for us to think about today how maybe the best practice i think to get us through this is prayer our ongoing communication with God. Martin Luther King Jr. said, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be a human being without breath. So prayer is something that we need ongoing in our lives. Someone has said, or a number of people have said, that prayer is an ongoing conversation with God, which includes joy and laughter, grief and tears. We hear all that in the Psalms. Uh, it includes confidence. You are my light and my salvation. And it includes doubt. Where are you, God? Do you hear me, God? It includes speaking. And I think that's the way most of us have been taught to pray and speaking. But a conversation also includes listening, listening for that still small voice. And perhaps more than anything, prayer is abiding, just being, practicing the presence of God, enjoying Emmanuel, God with us for god has said through christ and throughout scripture i will be with you i am in you the counselor the holy spirit will be with you and will remind you of all that i've said to you jesus says throughout this crisis i have been asked to pray more at, at Heron Point, I'll pass people in the hall and say, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, but you need to pray some more. Pray harder, pray harder, pray. So I've been asked to pray harder, to pray more urgently and eloquently. Like I have some kind of direct line to God. And mercifully, I do. But it's the same line that you have. It's the same direct line that we all have. When we pray, as you know, we're not telling God anything new. God is the omniscient one. God knows our needs, our feelings, our concerns before we ever speak them. God knows what's going on with Judy's neighbors, but we still pray for them and it changes us. It's almost like divine energy and love going towards them, holding them in the light. As we draw closer in prayer and open our hearts and our minds and our spirits to the source of all love and wisdom and compassion, we are changed. The body of Christ is changed. The world is changed. All creation is changed as we open ourselves and draw close to the source of all love. We all need that sovereign love and power. And we pray for one another to have an extra dose of that when they're going through difficult challenges, through cancer treatments, illness, grief, loneliness, rejection. By God's very nature, she wants to dwell within us as Emmanuel. So how do we do that? The disciples, I believe, gave us a petition for life. Lord, teach us to pray. That's a prayer each day. Lord, teach me to pray. How have you been praying? Haltingly? 
desperately, pleadingly, morning and night before meals on Sundays when we gather? Or are you in this ongoing conversation with God? I came across this week an article in an old, well, it's not that old, a couple of years ago, guidepost of an article by Bob Holstetter. I probably didn't say his name correctly. And he says there are at least, he suggests five ways for us to nurture this ongoing conversation with God. And that is to listen, to listen to not be doing all the talking in the conversation, to listen, to be quiet, to journal, get our thoughts and feelings out that way, to read, read scripture, uh, read anything that inspires you. I've been reading a lot of poetry lately, to read, to ask questions, the Psalms, again, are full of questions. Jesus' disciples are full of questions. Jesus is full of questions. To ask questions, it could be rhetorical questions, just questions, living the questions, as Rumi said. And to wait. I waited patiently for the Lord, the psalmist says. Life involves a lot of waiting. You know, friends, prayers may be spoken, sung, any good hymn is a prayer, written. Prayers flow in painting, knitting. I know some people do their best knit, praying as they knit. I pray when I'm driving, when I'm walking, when I'm hiking. We can pray gardening or even doing housework, cleaning, washing our hands. Of course, the person who's, who talked about this most was probably Brother Lawrence of the 16th century. He talked about the practicing the presence of God. And this is, um, these are some words and thoughts from Brother Lawrence, the most the holiest, most common, most necessary practice in the spiritual life is the presence of God. That is to take delight in and become accustomed to God's divine company, speaking humbly and lovingly with God at all times, at every moment, without rule or system, and especially in times of temptation, suffering, spiritual aridity, that is dryness, disgust, and even unfaithfulness and sin to speak to God. We must continually work hard so that each of our actions is a way of carrying on little conversations with God, not in any carefully prepared way, but as it comes from the purity and simplicity of the heart. We must carry out all our actions with care and with wisdom. Without the impetuosity, that's impetuousness, and precipitous, precipitancy of a distraught mind, it is necessary to work peacefully, tranquilly, lovingly with God. So this is our prayer, practicing God's presence. How does one attend to that holy presence? By being present, by opening one's heart and mind, by being led by the stirrings and nudgings of the Holy Spirit. I hope that speaks to you. Those times when there's something stirring in you, nudging you to do something or to say something, you're not sure where it came from, a good chance it came from the Holy Spirit. I have been led uh, to be present to God in yoga, in dreams, 
through angels, and that just means holy messengers. Many of you have been angels in my life. Through scripture, Lexio Divina, that's kind of, uh, gnaw, I call it gnawing on scripture, chewing on scripture. Through nature and walks, through beholding, through seeing through God's eyes. I think of Edwina Gatley in this, um, the British woman who, I think it was in Chicago, she became uh, so poignantly aware of the women who were um, in prostitution. That was kind of the, the way they could, could eat, could support themselves. And she saw them through God's eyes and loved them and committed her ministry to finding a way to help them have other choices. Seeing through God's eyes. This pandemic has wrought devastating uh, loss in human life. I think the, uh, we're just under 80,000, 80, thousand deaths in the United States and almost 280,000 worldwide. Unemployment, you may have heard this week, is up to 14.7 percent. The economy, so many question marks there. I even have had some people ask me, do you think there's a future for the church? What is this going to mean to the church? I believe that it is presenting us with an incredible opportunity, an intensive course, an independent study, but also a communal study in prayer. If we consider our life as an arduous journey, a trek through precipitous mountain, mountainous regions, dark valleys, as Selena reminded us last week, dry, arid deserts, cool streams, thick forests, treacherous waters, beautiful green meadows, nonetheless chock full of sheep and cow dung. And we think of what we need to take um, in this hike of life, this trek of life, not just through the pandemic, but through our 60, 80, however many years we have. I dare say that we would surmise what we need is God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Our everything, our rock and our refuge, our light and our salvation, our father, our mother, Thankfully, God is with us, our faithful companion, our bread, our light, our gate, our vine, our shepherd, our mother hen, our forgiving father, our nursing mother. Prayer is truly the best practice to keep us focused on God, our all in all, and to access that divine light and love and comfort and energy and compassion. So friends, I invite you to draw close to the one who loves you, who made you, who yearns to dwell even more fully in you so that together with God, we are about the healing of this world. Amen. Amen. So we now come to the time in the service where we share what God is working in us through this message. So does anyone have um, something you'd like to share? Judy. I, 
All right, Judy. I was just re been reading a book called If You Will Ask by Oswald Chambers, and it's all, all about prayer. And one of the things in it it talks about is how that the only one who prays in the Holy Spirit is the child, and that's the child's spirit in us. And that is the spirit of utter confidence in God. So when we have that confidence in God and we pray in the Holy Spirit, we actually bring the things that are on our minds and our hearts. So I've always wondered when I read the book, Teach Us to Pray, and there are so many things that people talk about how prayer is, is in different words and different spirits and different ways in your life. But I, I think for me, it's just knowing that God is is my God and that he loves me and cares about me. And in response to him for that, then I need to love and care others and care about others. Mm. So that's what prayer is to me. It's, it's, it's every, in everything, everything that I do and everything that I am is prayer in the Holy Spirit with God. Amen. Thank you, Judy. Living in that presence. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, this is Allison. Um, I was when uh, Anne was talking about uh, praying even as you're cleaning, which which probably seems like such a uh, an odd statement. I thought of my grandmother and how I just I have such clear memories of her just humming hymns as she washed the dishes and, mm -hmm. and set the table and all. It was just simply part of her and everything that she did was sort of a hymn. I was also thinking of Anne's daughter and uh, doing the, the dancing at the church and how when I first saw that, it really, I have to admit, it sort of shocked me. I thought, oh my gosh, dancing in a church and then I realized, no, this is just one more form of prayer, and it's just beautiful. So thank you so much. That was a great uh, sermon. Peter. Yeah, I like very much um, and what you, when you said that prayer uh, changes us. And, uh, and I think that that is so, so very true. It makes us aware of our dependency upon upon God, and uh, and we are not always made aware of that on a regular basis. But uh, this uh, COVID nineteen uh, period uh, places us all in a similar situation of threat and uh, the threat to our lives. And uh, the only source of uh, strength and of comfort is the one who is above it all. And uh, God's loving care um, is, um, is, is what assures us and gives us confidence that all will be okay, uh, whether we live or die. And, uh, and so um, that's, that's a very important message. And thank you very much, Anne, for focusing on this today. One of my um, books suggests that it was Kierkegaard who said, prayer does not change God, but it changes the one who prays. Anybody else have something that's working in you right now? Sandy? Uh, I'm having trouble unmuting you. Mute now. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I have found I, when you were talking about what you're going to take on your hike, that's what I was thinking about. Hmm, you know, what would I take? And, thinking about um, all the things that we're doing now to help ourselves and help others get through. And um, 
I definitely have felt uh, the need to journal more and that has been very helpful. So you mentioning that and uh, I have a journal, a, yeah, it's a journal that has four different sections and it, you know, I write our Bible verse for the day. Um, uh, what I need to work on, Lord teach me to, uh, prayer requests and there's another section. <laughs> My mind went blank. Sorry. I am thankful for. And um, I found it set up like that. I found that I found that to be very, very helpful in at least and focusing on what I need to focus on to, you know, help for a more positive outlook on everything. It's been wonderful. Thank you for the message. It was great. Thank you. I think it was Meister Eckhart who said, if the only prayer you ever pray is thanks, you've prayed it all. <laughs> you've said all the prayers. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Anybody else? All right, well now we move into a special time of prayer um, that we call worship which is just prayer with some music, right? Um, this might be a familiar hymn to some, unfamiliar for others, but they're really beautiful words. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire. Um, we have the Mormon Tabernacle Choir joining us for this song. So we now come to the time in our service where we share communion. Um, so I want to invite you to grab whatever it is around you for communion. Hold it up and show each other what we've got. We got a cookie. Mm -hmm. And we believe that somehow, in some way, God makes this work. Amen. Amen. So, um, so friends, this is the, whatever you have before you, this is not your countertop or your bedside table or your coffee table, but is the table of Christ. And Christ invites us to dine with him, to draw close to him, to be nourished by him. And we join in this communion prayer. And the table will be wide. And the welcome will be wide. And the arms will open wide to gather us in. And our hearts will open wide to receive. And we will come as children who trust there is enough. And we will come unhindered and free. And our aching will be met with bread and our sorrow will be met with wine. And we will open our hands to the feast without shame. And we will turn toward each other without fear. And we will give up our appetite for despair. And we will taste and know of delight. And we will become bread for a hungering world. And we will become drink for those who thirst. And the blessed will become the blessing. And everywhere will be the feast. And we remember how Jesus took the bread and when he blessed, he get, given thanks, he broke it and said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Brent, you want to do the cup? And in the same way, he took a cup of wine or grape juice or water, and he said, this is my blood shed for you. Every time you take of it, remember me. Amen. And so now I invite you to join me in the prayer that Jesus 
taught his disciples to pray in whatever language is most familiar for you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, so now uh, we come to the end of the service. So Join in the closing prayer. Yes, and I'll, I'll share it on the screen. So wherever you are, I invite you to join in the closing prayer. Mother of infinite wisdom, Christ of infinite compassion, spirit of infinite creative healing energy, Bring us to our knees in repentance. Bring us to our feet in action. Bring us to our senses in prayer that we may bear your light in this world. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Go in peace.